Hi everyone, Martin Mulder here for OnTheTracksOf007.com with a new episode of 7 Minutes of Bond Locations. This time I'm playing a home game uh, as we will be visiting my own backyard, the Dutch capital of Amsterdam. Amsterdam has an impressive history. Around the year 1200, a dam was built in the mouth of the river Amstel and a settlement grew there. In a few hundred years it became an important city and when its merchants started to collaborate and invest in overseas sea journeys, the Dutch East India Company was born and the city's wealthy golden age began. It has been the capital of the Kingdom of the Netherlands since the start of the 19th century and apart from its canals, tolerance and a red light district, the city is also known for its diamond industry. While you might think that the Netherlands did not contribute an awful lot to the James Bond series, uh, there certainly are quite a few connections. In 1997, our very own Daphne Deckers played a small part in Tomorrow Never Dies as Elliot Carver's PR lady, while in 1995, Famke Janssen landed a much bigger part in Goldeneye as Xenia Onatop. In 1987, one of our best actors, Jeroen Krabbe, played the role of Georgi Koskov in The Living Daylights. But our biggest contribution was in 1971, when Guy Hamilton's crew came to Amsterdam to use the city's bridges, canals and canal houses as the backdrop for Sean Connery's final Eon-produced Bond film, Diamonds Are Forever. In the film, Bond takes the place of smuggler Peter Franks to meet Frank's contact in Amsterdam, the sexy Tiffany Case. In fact, the crew spent less than 48 hours in this city. They arrived on Saturday, uh, July 3rd, 1971, from Frankfurt, where they shot a tiny scene. And in Amsterdam, the crew stayed at the Esso Motor Hotel, just outside the city center. Nowadays, this is a Holiday Inn. The locations in Amsterdam are all relatively close to each other, uh, basically just like everything else in the Netherlands. The first thing uh, we see in the film is one of our uh, many canal boats. These boats are used to tour the tourists around the city using the elaborate system of canals. The specific canal boat used in the film was the Prince Willem Alexander, named after our then Crown Prince. But since the Prince became our King in 2013, the canal boat has been renamed to King Willem Alexander and is still in use. From the canal boat, uh, the tourists have a clear view of the dead body of Mrs. Whistler being pulled out of the water. This scene was filmed here. The boat her body was pulled up on also still exists and is a former fire boat that was restored in 1990 and now resides in a museum. Mr. Wind and Mr. Kidd, played by Bruce Glover and Potter Smith, uh, can be seen observing the whole scene from a bridge which is called the Skinny Bridge, which is also mentioned and explained in the movie. The Skinny Bridge is here. In the back of the shot we already see Peter Frank's yellow Triumph stag arrive. He pulls up to the Reguliersgracht 36, which is nowadays a student house. For years I've been wondering why on earth they chose that particular house in Amsterdam. Um, of course it's relatively close to all the other locations, but uh, still, uh, all the houses in that center, uh, they look alike. And we did ask Guy Hamilton, but he also didn't, he couldn't remember uh, why they chose that one. I did find out that it was owned by a lawyer at the time, which, which might be a connection to the, to the filming. Uh, but most likely the owner was just an acquaintance of uh, somebody who worked on the film. So that's how it usually goes. They only use the exterior of the house. Canal houses like this only have narrow stairways and certainly no elevators. As you know, next year, uh, Diamonds Are Forever celebrates its 50th anniversary and of course there's going to be a great event for that. Um, there will be two consecutive weekends uh, in a 9 to 10 day period, basically just like we did uh, with the OHMS 50 uh, event in 2019. The first weekend will be a celebration in Amsterdam and the second weekend will be a celebration in Las Vegas. It's scheduled for the end of September, early October. That leaves us with two last Bond connections worth mentioning. 
First, first one is uh, Dutch actor Hans de Vries, uh, who was among the final actors uh, who were up for the role uh, for du of, of 007 uh, back in 1968. That was until George dropped by Eon's office, and we all know how that ended. Finally, in the Netherlands, you can find one of the original four Aston Martin DV5s connected to Goldfinger and Thunderbolt. As you might know, originally two cars were used for Goldfinger. But for promotional purposes, two extra cars were purchased by Eon. One of these two promo cars is owned by and on permanent display at the Laumann Museum in The Hague. So if you're in the area, it's fun to pay the museum a visit. Uh, they have an unbelievable collection of cars and, and the DB5 is just icing on the cake. So, that can... Yes? Franks. Peter Franks. Sorry, I'm, I'm kind of in, in the middle of something. As I said, that can... What? Franks. Peter Franks. I know. Listen, buddy. You have to come back later. <sighs> Don't make me come down. So sorry about that. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, hope to see you again next week. Right, that's it. I'm coming down. Check out on the tracks of 007.com. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.